Hello, and uh, welcome again to another episode of Tying Tuesday here at Avimax. Uh, my name is Dave, um, and today we are going to be tying the Lunker Leech. Uh, it's a fantastic little leech pattern. Um, it's tied on a jig hook, for, so you know, for those of you who love uh, fish and jigged flies. Um, it's a great bug to have in your arsenal, has a lot of movement, great for pretty much year-round, variety of different species from trout to bass. Um, and you know, there's a couple nice features about it that you don't see in a lot of flies. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. All right. So for starters today, uh, we're going to be tying on the Umqua U555. Uh, it's a nice jig hook, um, kind of like an economy jig hook. You get a bunch of them. Um, they come 50 to a pack, so. You know, you get a bunch of bang for your buck. Um, they've got a pretty wide gape, so they do work pretty well for a variety of patterns, but you know, larger streamers, leeches, that type of thing, they work great. Uh, and like I said, you don't shill out a ton for them, so it's just a great all around kind of, you know, not too expensive, but not a terrible hook. So we're gonna start by putting uh, our hook into the vise, make sure it's nice and snugged up, nice and secure. We want it to be nice and happy in there. We're gonna be doing a little bit of prying on it. Um, you will need a couple things. Um, obviously, choose your favorite thread. Um, personally, I like to tie with, you know, nano silk. For those of you who have seen some of my prior videos, it's certainly one of those threads that I talk a lot about, uh, and for good reason. You know, the versatility in it is just outstanding. Um, today, we're going to be using uh, some of the 50 denier, uh, which is fantastic. It's about a 12 aught. Um, you'll find that even though it's small and thin, uh, you get plenty of strength so you can really pry down and, and when you're tying in some of your dubbing and other materials you can really snug things up nicely. Another couple things that we are going to be needing um, because this is on a jig hook uh, and as you can see we've got these beads kind of hanging off of the front of the fly you'll be needing a little pin uh, certainly just so we can add these beads and then we're going to have two sizes of black nickel tungsten beads. Um, so the first size is going to be a 3.25 millimeter. Um, I'm using some that I got from Montana Fly Company. You can buy them in small packs. You can also buy them in 100 packs if you like. Uh, and then also we're going to be using these larger guys from Wapsi. They're 3 16 um, and both these beads are going to add a pretty substantial amount of weight. Um, so feel free to kind of use them on a wide variety of sizes. You know, we're tying today on a size eight, uh, but you can certainly tie even all the way up to like a size four. Uh, you wouldn't really necessarily need to change your bead size to keep your fly actually proportionate and balanced. Um, but I'll leave that up to you. You can feel free to, you know, fiddle around with that and fiddle around with different styles of jig hooks that you like. So for starters today, we need to put these beads onto our pin. Okay, so just start, the small one is right in front of the bigger one, okay, and we'll tie those in here in just a second. Next up, we need to start by just applying a small little thread layer here, okay, and again, for those of you, if you've never tied with nano silk, it does tend to be kind of slippery, so you will need to kind of add a sufficient thread layer just to make sure everything you know, stays nice and snug, give it a little tug, make sure it's not going anywhere. And then just go back. And we're gonna go back to just about where the barb is at. You, you know, again, there's no exact science to this, but I like to tie it back and just give myself a pretty good amount of body. So stop about right there. Okay, now take your pin with your beads, and we're gonna apply these guys, okay? So, and we're gonna tie these down. Again, make sure you're tying it nice and snug. Move those wraps forward, going up towards the eye of the hook. You'll see that like that guy, a little bit. Pull it off so you get a little bit more room like that. Kind of hang it off. Wrap this guy up. And because it is nano silk, I go back over it just one more time, like so. Okay, and once you got all this down, 
we should be all snugged up. Okay, let me give it a little test. Yeah, that's nice and snugged up. Um, next up is we're gonna actually add this little wiggle tail. Uh, for those of you who are bass anglers, you know, I'm sure you guys are very familiar with a lot of this stuff. Um, but these little wiggle tails are made by Wopsy. Um, it's a great little kind of super flat, semi-durable. It's not the most durable material, but it is a semi-durable kind of wiggle tail. It comes out, lots of little movement with it. And this is basically just going to be dangling off the back end of our hook and our fly. And so as it's going through the water, this wiggle tail really adds a lot of kind of movement. It just wiggles all over. If you're fishing it under an indicator, it kind of sits there and each little twitch, it kind of just flutters around and adds a nice little level of movement to our fly. And when you put this in, if you're using a thin thread, I will say the first couple wraps, you do want to be diligent about not wrapping too tight. Uh, the reason for it is if you've got a really thin, super strong thread like Nano Silk, um, this thin material is kind of prone to tearing. So throw it in with a couple loose wraps first and then apply them going all the way up like so. And then you can go back over the top of it and really snug things down a little bit. And you just won't really break as many of these wiggle tails. You know, I've cut through plenty of them in my time, but if you add those loose wraps, when you come back over it, it doesn't tend to cut through the material. So at this part, we've got this, this guy hanging off the back. Like I said, it can be straight. It really does not matter where that is actually sitting because as the leech is sitting in the water, the whole thing's gonna be moving around anyway. Uh, so don't worry about it. Just have it kind of dangling off the back. If you want it to be shorter, you can do that. They do make these in a smaller size too. These particular ones that I'm using here today are the green, orange, black uh, flaked, but they are in the large size. I kind of like the large size, you know, the Lunker Leech, I think it is a nice fly, especially when you tie it a little larger. But if you're fishing for say something like brook trout or something like that, or your hook size is a little smaller, um, the large wiggle tail can kind of be a little bit too big and proportionate uh, to the rest of your fly. So if you want to downsize it, Wopsy does offer this in a small size. So the next step is we are going to need to apply whatever you like as far as your dubbing wax, but apply a pretty generous amount of dubbing wax onto your thread, okay? And before we get into actually throwing the dubbing on, I wanna show you what we're using here today. Uh, we're using one of my personal favorites. Um, the material is called Angora Goat. It's a fantastic dubbing for a multitude of different uses. It has nice body to it. Um, has great kind of flair to it. You can tease it out super easy. The length of each little piece and each little fiber is pretty nice too. It's not super short. It's not crazy, crazy long. So, you know, the long stuff, you don't have to sit in there and just constantly tease it out. And it also has enough volume in it that, you know, once you've kind of thrown it into your dubbing loop, spun it up and, uh, and wrapped it around the shank of your hook, it kind of flares out on its own and rarely do you really need to kind of go back through with a bodkin and actually tease it back out. Okay, so we applied some dubbing wax here. We're gonna create a nice good dubbing loop. Okay, and again, there's no exact science to this. You know, if you wanted a sparser one, just apply less dubbing. This is roughly, oh, I'd say maybe four inches long. Um, you can always make another one if you need. You know, if you come up short, you can always add another dubbing loop. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I do tend to find that just given the size of everything, Kind of keeping it relatively shorter, three to four inches is a good size for your dubbing loop. And like I said, if you run out of, you know, dubbing loop and, and you need to apply more, you can just make another one. It's not a big deal. Okay, so hold this guy open like so. You know, I just use my finger. Some people use, you know, a nice little dubbing twister if that's, you know, how you like to apply this stuff and, and keep your loop open. I find that just throwing my finger in there works great. Okay, and we're gonna very generously apply that Angora goat into the dubbing loop, okay? And like I said, they get, they're really generous with the amount of dubbing they actually give you in each of these packages. Um, so I tend to just overload it. The stuff compresses too really well, so you can really, really jam pack a lot of this material in there. And like I said, you know, if you want something less 
less uh, bulky, something a little bit more sparse, just apply less dubbing here. There's, just, there's nothing wrong with that. Or if you're just tying a smaller fly, that's obviously gonna be the case. Okay. So as you can see, we got this guy wrapped up in there, stuffed up. Throw your dubbing twister in there, just try and center all this dubbing a little bit like that. Okay, give it a nice little pinch below. Spin up our twister. Careful not to suck this tail back up in there. Do it one more time. I like to really make these loops tight. Again, for those of you who have never used Nano Silk, you'd just be mind boggled by how much you know, pressure you can really apply on this stuff before it actually breaks. So you can really pry on it and you can see that each time you pull on it, it wants to tighten those wraps a little bit. It's definitely one of the best, best parts of using this thread is it's just so crazy strong. And now I'm gonna take my hackle pliers, pinch right below where my dubbing stops. Take some scissors, cut out the remainder. And I do this just because it's so much easier to wrap this way. I don't know how many of these things I have broken in my life, but I'm sick of buying them. So I tend to just use the hackle pliers. And now we're gonna just start wrapping that dubbing onto our shank. Just moving up each time. Keep moving. Don't worry about the bulk. Like I said, the lunker leech can be fat. I think it fishes great that way. And there we go. And we're gonna get in here, really tie that off. I find that I've got a little bit of extra room in there. That's okay, like I said. You know, we can. you can see there's that little gap in there. We came up just a tiny bit short. Not a big deal. It's really not a big deal at all because we can always apply more dubbing. A couple more wraps. And just to finish this off, I'm gonna throw a little bit more in here. Okay. Hit it with the wax. Perfect. All right. Now I don't wanna fill this too much um, because we will be adding another type of dubbing here in a second for the collar of the fly but I do want to kind of fill in just in front of the eye right here. I just want to kind of fill that up so it just has that nice full body look to it. Okay. And we'll do one more. Okay. Sweet. So there you go. Now, while we're here, we might as well just apply the next uh, kind of collar of dubbing. So this is going to be one of the final steps to this bug. The next dubbing I'm going to be using uh, is SLF Prison Dub. It is awesome dubbing. Uh, it's very kind of fine. It compresses very well. Um, this particular color is the brown olive. You know, I just kind of chose brown olive because it sits really nice with this brown olive complexion for the rest of the leech. Um, but feel free to fiddle around with whatever colors, flashy or natural, whatever kind of suits your fancy, whatever you like. Feel free to throw it in there. Um, but the prism dub, you can be very generous with it when applying it in here because it does compact very nice. You know, think about it basically as like more compressible, little bit finer ice dub. But if you wanted to use ice dub as far as like a substitute, again, that is just fine. I like this stuff though, just because it really snugs up in there. And then once you've kind of finished your fly and wrapped it up in there, everything kind of sits nice and tight right behind the head and you've got this nice kind of taper to your body. Okay, all right. And then do the same thing we did before. We're gonna take it in here. We're gonna spin it up. Snug everything up. Like that, you can see it's nice and tight. There's really no need to necessarily have to comb it out, but if you wanna pull some of these fibers out, Kind of get them to flare out a little bit. More than welcome to. We'll do the same thing we did last time. Oop. Okay. And then just kind of fill the void right behind the bead. So we're gonna bring it up. 
Make sure those thread wraps kind of come up a little bit up to right behind that front bead. Perfect. Snuck everything up in there. All right. All right. And there's that last wrap for the collar. I like to manually kind of squeeze it and twist it. You tend to get a little bit of extra wraps in there. This kind of squishes everything in there nice and tight. I've got a little bit of extra material here. Instead of over bulking my fly, what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna come back in through here, tie it off. You can always just trim out that excess. It's not a big deal. You know, if you really wanted to, you could peel it back off and use it on your next fly if you want. That's just fine like that. Okay, finish it up with a couple nice tight wraps right on top of each other. Pull some of this out. You can see it just comes out real quick. You could save that for later or chuck it in the trash can, no problem. Okay, like that. And I like to kind of push these beads, squish and compress everything so you can really snug down those final wraps in there. Just helps that durability element to your fly, like that. Okay, clear out. You can see now I'm exposing that eye of that hook a little bit. So now it's a nice easy bug to tie on, especially if, you know, for some of you guys and gals that, you know, maybe your eyesight isn't really what it used to be. Throw a couple whip finishes on here. We'll do one more for good measure. And voila. She be. If you like what you guys saw here today, uh, we here at Avimax really appreciate all the all the support. Uh, we love tying these videos for you guys. It's something that we really like to do and look forward to every week. Um, if you really like it and you want to see more content, you know, like, comment, subscribe. Um, we always appreciate the good feedback. Um, we just we love making them. So, yeah. Till next week.